Okay, hello folks. Gem here. Here's the palette that I use. And this is the brush that I'm going to be using for the sky, which is a big squirrel mop. And um, firstly, I have pre-mixed some colours here. A few greys, some cool warm greys, and um, some rather clean warm colours which I'm going to put down in the sky near the beginning and then I'll add the greys working from pale to gradually darker and it's not going to be a very dark sky it is a cloudy sky with um, bits of light filtering through and this is a scene that I've drawn out loosely in pencil based on a couple of photographs put together um, and it's of a local starling roost, as in the birds' starlings, and that's on the Somerset Levels in uh, southwest England. And it's based on an autumnal time of year when I went to visit the place. So quite cold, um, but some warm colours in the reed beds. We've got a reed bed here um, amidst large areas of water and some trees on the right which kind of provide a bit of a lead-in. There's a lot of foliage. I'm using a lot of soft edges combined with hard to try to um, create emphasis to certain bits of the foliage, just picking out enough kind of texture hopefully and suggestion of detail to give the impression of the sort of thing that's there. Anyway, um, we'll see what happens. But first, before beginning, here are those photographs that I was referring to. So this one shows the time of day and the atmosphere in general that I was aiming for. And I quite like this general composition. Um, I had a good, look, a good look around the area, exploring and snapping away on my camera. But this scene, I felt, has good depth, enough interest, and it's quite representative of the location generally. Um, I took another shot a bit earlier in the evening and that's what this one is it shows a bit more color because the light was a bit higher a bit more zoomed out so it shows a bit more of the surrounding context which is useful so I'll take I'll take the best bits that I feel I have in here in regards to the trees um, take inspiration from those but make changes where necessary and the sky will change quite a lot hopefully for the benefit of the composition right well I'm beginning this process by having a bit of a think and I'm thinking where am I going to put some clean water on this paper first okay so I'm up in the top left some places will be a bit random I'm coming down here over the horizon line I want some bleeds to occur as I build up this sky soft edges coming from hard edges in places and that's what this is about and next I'll add some warm pale warm tones um, a couple of colors that's raw umber and that is Indian red very pale and now into this I'll add some greys and gradually build up my areas of cloud this is this is pl part planned part intuitive the main idea is to make sure that I have the bulk of the tone in my sky where I have the heavy heaviest cloud over on the left hand side there I've just added some more clean water where I forgot to initially but I want just a, a lot of light coming down there because in that area of the sky I'm going to have a bird the marsh harrier added at the end and I want that to be almost in a burst of light on the left there I've got in with some darker tones now so every time I add these marks some of them are on dry paper a lot now are on damp paper and so I'm getting bleeds happening in places and where the paper is dry I'll have hard edges um, I'm going to gradually reduce the areas of white paper a lot of this is killing off the white albeit with a very pale tone the idea of which is to create extra glow and highlight from where I do keep some white areas I've switched brushes to um, a slightly smaller mop simply because I used it a second ago to mop up some areas as it when it was very dry and I squeezed all the water out of it to do that 
and I'm doing it again now just picking up some where there's a bit too much dampness that could create runbacks or other problems and now I've done the bulk of the sky and I'm just sort of tidying up I've got a few minutes while it's wet to lift in places by using the mop with a clean and there you see I've squeezed I'm squeezing any moisture or virtually all moisture out and using it as a vacuum cleaner effectively picking up so the edges that I get from lifting in this way will be quite soft you have to be careful not to squeeze out all of the moisture from the brush or it will suck up too much and it can even leave quite a hard edge in that situation so I've got a few areas of the cloud on the left where I've got I'm trying to simulate light coming down through gaps in the cloud and that will draw us into the distance in the painting and I'm fiddling a bit there on the left hand side and as I do this I change my mind and I decide I want some cool colour down there in fact don't need white paper at all and the colour that's in the top right hand corner is a cooler grey that I have slightly different more based on phthalo or in my case Windsor blue red shade by Windsor and Newton so here I'm gonna put a bit of that in and I have to be very careful with this that the wetness of the paint the dilution is exactly or as near as I can get it to the paint that's on the paper there is every danger in this situation of creating runbacks um, using this paper particularly is quite absorbent so that paint will be drying out and soaking into the paper as soon as it's on there so you have to bear that in mind but now bar a little bit of extra fiddling just tidying up here with a small brush to eliminate a few areas there's a few specks there that were rem that I don't want little specks in that area of cloud I want it to be quite smooth so I've just blended them in with the tip of this smaller brush and now this is the brush that I will use for the remainder of this painting if you're interested in the brush I've mentioned this in the details the written details so now I'm mixing the tone here we are here's the color which needs to be a dark quite a strong tone and this is the horizon line a bit of a hillside quite a low hill we only have low hills on the Somerset levels so that's what this is and I think of this I call this dry into wet it's wet into wet essentially but the paint that I'm adding is quite dry in the sense that it's very undiluted so it's thick so it won't bleed very far so it's controllable and yet it will give me a soft edge and I varied the color of that a little bit from left to right now while it's all wet again dry into wet I'm adding thicker paint and these are trees and bushes in the distant area beyond what is a big reed bed but which are standing out against that bit of hillside and I deliberately just put the top of the hill in and let the paint bleed downwards slightly to a paler tone so that these trees in places at least are going to stand out dark against that lighter area and uh, there's a small bush there trying to vary the sizes and shapes of these trees and I've gone straight in while the sky area was still damp there I wanted these marks to be quite soft really at this point so I'm going in while the sky is still slightly damp and there is that light patch in the sky I did want these light patches around about this area because they'll help draw the focus to these trees which are quite distant in the scene and hopefully will draw the eye into the scene and that means they're kind of counter changed dark against that light area so they should stand out reasonably well hopefully
these trees incidentally are really not particularly like what was in the photograph which were really just thin very thin and I've decided to kind of try to make these look a bit more a bit like Scots pines some of them anyway so they've got those hats distinctive bulks of foliage in some ways and we do get these um, these trees here sort of spread around with the more native to this area trees which is a lot of willow but other things as well so now I'm going to leave that area on the right probably for a while I've turned my attention to what is now the beginnings of the slightly nearer area which is reed bed and I'm allowing my brush to touch into the the darker paint which is beginning to dry above just to soften the edge a little bit in places and the idea is to try to keep it unified with this area so it's not completely um, separated by a very hard edge and I do this throughout trying to knit distance to middle ground, middle ground to foreground so I've even brought what is going to be some foreground element in the left hand corner there and now again as it's drying out I've turned my attention to the right hand side and I'm using quite a thick mix of paint again going dry into those damp trees as they dry trying to judge it so that when I add more paint it won't flow out of control and it's an extra little suggestion of shadowed areas and detail essentially I suppose back to the reed bed just suggestions of the kind of detail here and it's quite a warm colour mixed with cools that's based on Indian red there mixed with Windsor blue red shade and probably a little bit of the kind of mud if you like from my palette which I just add to grey things down a bit whatever happens to be on the bottom half of my palette I just leave it there because it's very useful a lot of the time now what I'm defining trying to define these a bit so I'm putting in some strong darks here for the shadowed part in fact shadowed and reflections in the same go I'm sort of trying to put in what are the reflections of this uh, reed bed and this is all quite dark and it's kind of all quite backlit by a low sun which is sort of off to the right out of shot but we're getting towards dusk really that's the idea with this scene in fact the photograph that I was looking at which is really just for the general composition mainly um, was darker I've lightened it a bit so I'm whipping this brush around joining areas up that are slightly damp trying to sort of keep it alive and keep it unified and I'll leave most of this reed bed area um, but I want to make I want to make sure it joins to the foreground and I partly preparing that now and then I can leave it and come back and later on do more on the foreground and again try to unify it with this area as it is now I'm adding a little detail here a um, little chunk of reeds slightly separated from the main bed to help as a smaller a smaller mark a smaller detail to help draw the eye in back onto the right hand side back onto the trees this area of hedgerow has got some large trees in it and this is kind of a lead in from the right hand side of the painting following the right hand side of what is a large flooded area in fact this reed bed is man made it's a man made um, nature reserve so there are there are thousands upon thousands of birds 
migrate to this area in winter. Anyway, this tree, so I've put down the basic shape and I've just dropped, I'm dropping in some different colours to it. So overall, I'm gradually, I've become a bit warmer in the colours there from those more distant trees to that one. And now this is an underwash, really. And I'll vary the colour and the tone a little bit. This is to put down the ground, the groundwork for the foreground, knitting it to the midground. And a lot of this was dyed back reeds, but other shrubs and plants in the foreground, in fact, and some low bushes. And some of this, when it's dry, I will be going back over and adding more shaded areas and in doing so creating a bit more definition. But I want to make sure that I get a bit of variety of tone Oops. and colour in this area because a lot of this is going to show through. And now turning attention to the water again and I'm making some, some vertical strokes with clean water because I was thinking at this point about doing reflections of those trees and that would have been useful for that but now I've just realized actually that I will do those reflections a little bit later because first I want to do a bit of an underwash to that just reflecting the overall tone of the sky uh, so I keep the top white we're looking more along the surface of the water the further it gets away from us and in theory looking down slightly more into the depths of the water as it gets closer so I'm, this wash partly simulates how it will be a little bit darker as we look more down into it but really it's more about just reflecting the, that cloud that's up there in the sky. I'm just lifting here a little bit, having cleaned off and squeezed the moisture out of that brush. I always try to do all of the lifting that I might do when the paint is still wet. I don't like lifting from dry, apart from very occasionally just in small areas, just very small areas normally. And here I'm whipping around clean water again because I want soft edges throughout this area. I will have, it was a bit random because I like to actually be taken a bit by surprise with some hard edges appearing. They can always be softened after the fact then but so I'm setting it up for mainly soft edges so that's quite neat paint there so the paint is soft edged but not running out of control uh, thinking here about trying to vary the brush marks and changing the tone and the colour a little bit as I move across eventually from left to right through this foreground area. Now that bit of reed bed in the middle distance I want to kind of make that blend with in theory the ground foliage that's this side so that they sort of look sort of unified because it's sort of silhouetted essentially this these reeds or weeds plants that are on this side of the water so I don't want them to join particularly to be separate rather particularly from 
those over the other side. And also importantly, I've deliberately made it soft edged by pre-wetting the whole of this area where the grasses meet the water side here in the middle so that that contrasts with the hard edged reflection that's directly above it so that the eye sort of goes past this foreground and into the middle ground led by those hard edges and the dark shaded tone of those reeds there so now I'm going back in here because something didn't look right having done a bit setting a bit more context up I can see I need to go back in here and just knit it together a bit more but I did want to keep some of that water shining through you see that was the whole idea but gradually disappearing into foliage Now I've gone for a distinctly darker a bit of shaded plant just poking through the lighter stuff here and in fact having put that on as it was it's not quite as dark as I wanted it so I'm going in thicker darker paint yet still because I'm working on damp paper whatever I put down is going to dilute further just into the dampness that's already on the paper. Now that's quite a strong dark, hopefully about right. And while this edge is still damp, in places I'm just going back in with some quite neat paint uh, just to darken just to create little accents of slightly darker areas Okay, clean water again. This will give me a soft edge join if I just dampen this area again and start painting from here. Then I can continue where I left off earlier, hopefully sort of fairly seamlessly. And in fact I've got a tall thin tree here, again trying to mix up the shapes of these trees. A lot of this is kind of based on what was there sort of taking a bit of the inspiration from what's there but then enhancing the difference in the forms as much as possible so there was in fact a dead tall tree there um, while well, the remnants of just the, tr the main trunk really but it gave me the idea that it would be good anyway to have quite a distinct tall tree in here so where I dampened the base means that that will sort of soften into it at the base Um, I pre-wet some of the paper behind that tree for some soft edges and but not everywhere so there there are some sort of slightly hard dry brush edges to that as well and now moving on to this this is quite a strong um, part of the composition this tree so I'm trying to paint it quite boldly and trusting to luck with the marks that come out And so that was wet onto dry for the top of that tree foliage mainly, hard edged marks, bit of dry brush. And so now I'm actually going to join this up for a softer bottom part of the tree. So put a set the groundwork there with some clean water, although it actually it could have done with being a bit cleaner, but <laughs> um, yeah, adding dark into that now anyway. So it's kind of knitted together with the dry, dry brush work.
and you can probably see from the pencil marks perhaps you can see that I have indicated where I want each of these trees but only quite roughly and then it's a matter of drawing with the brush in terms of trying to define the form with with some hopefully appealing marks <laughs> although they don't all come off they never all come off you just have to go for it and hope that two or three come off okay because that can be enough sometimes in the general context and I'm softening away some of these edges again with basically clean water or fairly clean and bleeding away what would have been hard edges Very often when I'm painting I will put down some paint, see how it looks, and then immediately amend it. And you can do that as you go along, so long as you act quite quickly. This paper doesn't really give you much of that time uh, because it's so absorbent compared to a lot of the cotton papers which will hold up the paint and water on the surface for a bit longer, give you more time to push it around. But I really like this paper, I like absorbent papers means you can move the brush really quickly without getting inadvertent dry brush work appearing throughout which I find happens when I try to because I'm used to this when I work on some of the cotton papers even on a hot press surface I can get enough texture because I like moving the brush really quickly so here now I'm adding going over that earlier wash just leaving bits coming through because the overriding concern has to get has to be to get the overall tone of this area roughly correct so I'm kind of building it up looking at it and I keep thinking okay I think I'm gonna to have to make this a little bit darker because it's all about the relative tone in relation to the light in the water and in the sky and I've got to try to uh, therefore keep these large areas roughly the correct tone overall it doesn't so matter so much about the details anyway it's the overall tone of the largest shapes and it's dusk so it's, it shouldn't be too light all of this well it's it's nearly dusk Now in this right hand corner I'm going to develop a, a dark bush in front of which I'm going to have a light tree trunk and I've, I'm again I've pre-wet the sky just above the main area here of this bush well the bush will extend into that damp area here we go but I want these marks again to be soft edged that's why I've done that to counteract to, to contrast with the tree to the left and also to contrast with this pale tree trunk which is going to be any minute in front of this so it's going to be a hard edged light shape against this dark and then the rest of the tree that's going to stick out the top will also again be hard edged and I'm adding really quite neat dark paint into that because any moment now I'm going to scrape out with my fingernail there we go and that didn't come out quite as thick as I wanted it I cut this nail into slightly too much of a point so it's good for thin marks but I wanted a thicker one really
and I find this method can be useful. It creates a different type of mark again to add to the range of marks in the painting and it's uh, easier frankly than negatively painting some of these shapes sometimes. But it is one of those um, slightly hit and miss methods. You have to press quite hard and move your fingernail really quickly so you, again the mark very often isn't going to be exactly how you might want it so you have to adapt, just accept these things. I'm just adding some darks into that light in fact. There's supposed to be a kind of silver birch tree I think here and they've got these dark specks in their bark. And now building counterchanged dark now against the light of the sky some bits of branches Right, now back to the water and I'll finish that tree later. This is a hog hair brush, stiff brushes and I've just, with clean water, just softened about a centimetre of that hard edge there uh, so that this knits into that a bit better. And I'm now dampening, just looking at this and carefully considering where I put this water on the, on the page here that's where I'm going to want some soft edged part of the reflection of this tree most of which is going to be dry brush hard edged but that's quite an expanse of water there 100 meters perhaps or something that we're looking across so it's going to be affected differently the reflections across that distance perhaps the wind is blowing on some part making it more rippled and so on. So combining soft with dry brush technique, um, soft edges with dry brush can help suggest those sort of subtle differences. So this is fairly dark paint, fairly dry brush and moving it quickly to try to get a bit of sparkle, a bit of dry brush effect. And trying to build this up quick enough so that it is unified, so all these marks blend together. So there I'm on the damp area. And I think it's very important, I always try to tell myself when I'm working on reflections, not to get bogged down in thinking that they have to be a, an exact mirror image. Because if you observe from life, you'll, you'll note that this is so often, well, so rarely the case. Especially over quite a distance of water. So just enough so that it looks like it's supposed to be a reflection. And now adding another detail or two to the tree, this is something I always try to build up these details gradually so you don't do too much too soon. But an extra bit of trunk and branch in some of these trees can be useful partly just to see the reflection of them. And this bit here where the paper is actually is still a bit too white or virtually untouched, I just want to darken that a little bit so I've pre-wet the whole area again and now added added a bit of a colour into there, a bit of, bit of tone to fill that in a little bit.
there's not all that much remaining to be done quite important is this tree on the right um, and then of course the bird which is the final thing but what the picture is really all about okay so using the side of the brush and some dry brush work now um, to trying to suggest a bit of the twiggery maybe the odd leaf that remains on this silver birch tree It's all a little bit of a fiddle and it needs to be done quite slowly so I'm making sure that I'm properly looking at what I do as I do it. And this bit here I've changed the colour and the tone and it's a slightly wetter mark, not as dry brush. Trying to give a suggestion of a bit of depth from front to back where the light may be falling slightly differently through that tree. It's a subtle thing, but it's worth paying some attention to. So I'm taking my time. And just to lift off with the finger to soften the bottom edge of that particular mark. And I quite often use my fingers a little bit like that, as you may have seen. Now this is it, the, the bird. Now again I'm being very careful to make sure I'm getting it in the right place. It's obviously a very important mark. It's quite a strong dark actually in the very light part of the sky. And I've decided to do this bird in quite a careful, quite a focused way. So the shape is discernible, it's not just a dot. You can actually see, I don't know if you can see, but it has, you can see its tail. It's a large bird in theory, it's a um, marsh harrier. And they fly over here trying to pick off, uh, perhaps pick off the starlings. I'm not sure if they do that actually. I might be thinking of some of the other birds of prey. Anyway, enough prattling. There's the picture. I hope that you enjoyed watching that. Thanks for joining me and I'll sign off. Bye.